Oh, hello there. DreamWorks, a company that was created out of revenge, has entertained many people all over the world, including me. This film studio is best known for creating some of the most iconic animated film series such as How to Train Your Dragon, Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda, and of course, Shrek. These films and characters have been represented pretty much everywhere, from your local store DVD display to a big name theme park such as Universal Studios. But there was another place that they were represented at, and that place, which was actually four places, was the Gaylord Hotels brand. This hotel chain is best known for hosting many events and conventions, as well as just being beautiful and a great place to stay. Obviously a great place for DreamWorks to partner with. So in this video I will be talking about DreamWorks involvement with this hotel chain, detailing summer events and Christmas events. This is the history of the DreamWorks experience at Gaylord Hotels. So before I talk about Shrek, Poe, and the rest of the gang's takeover of the Gaylord properties, I should explain the history of both. DreamWorks was founded on October 12th, 1994, and like I said earlier, it was created out of revenge. It was founded by David Geffen, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and Steven Spielberg, and was actually associated with Amblin for a while. The studio was made simply because Katzenberg was angry with former Disney CEO Michael Eisner for not promoting him, and so he decided to leave and make his own films and be his own boss. Now originally DreamWorks only did live action films, but slowly started to produce animated films, the first being Ants in 1997 which is most definitely a rip-off of Pixar's A Bug's Life. That was quickly followed up by films like The Prince of Egypt and The Road to El Dorado. But everything changed in 2001, when a little film called Shrek came out and changed the future of animation forever. And ever since then, DreamWorks has been making CG films and officially becoming an animation studio, where they produced films good and bad. As for Gaylord Hotel's history, it's a little complicated. So the Gaylord Hotel's company was founded in 1982, but their history actually goes back to November 24, 1977. That's when the first and primary hotel opened, Gaylord Opryland in Nashville, Tennessee. And due to that hotel's popularity, the company opened more hotels in other states. The first opened 25 years after Opryland, that being Gaylord Palms in 2002. That was then followed up by Gaylord Texan in 2004 and Gaylord National in 2008. There is also Gaylord Rockies in Colorado, however I will not be talking about it since it wasn't built at the time of the story. Speaking of the story, let's get back to that. Our story begins on April 27, 2011, when the Gaylord Hotels company decided to have a press conference. No one quite knew what to expect as Gaylord refused to tell what would happen, only that there would be special guests that traveled far. Everybody just had to wait.
At the conference that took place at Gaylord Opryland, Amy Atkinson, VP Marketing and PR for the company, took to the stage to announce who the special guests were. But before she could announce who it was, this happened. And so the Out of nowhere, Shrek himself in all his green glory walks through the crowd and onto the stage. A few seconds later, Poe from Kung Fu Panda came out showing off his Kung Fu moves. Then immediately after, Alex the Lion and the Penguins from Madagascar dance their way through the crowd and onto the stage. Everybody there was confused. What's going on? Why are all the characters here? Thankfully, Gaylord Entertainment CEO Colin V. Reed had all the answers. After talking about business things, he finally addressed why the DreamWorks characters were there. It would all be a part of a new partnership between DreamWorks and Gaylord to get more families to visit, and it would be called the DreamWorks Experience. This partnership would offer guests many experiences involving DreamWorks and its characters, such as character breakfast, Christmas-themed festivities, activities at the pools, birthday parties, parades, and other themed events as it would span to all four Gaylord properties. This deal only included three of DreamWorks' films franchises, Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and Madagascar. But later, one more would be added. More on that later. And that's pretty much it. No other big announcements regarding the experience were mentioned. The Tennessee governor showed up, as did Jeffrey Katzenberg. And really, the only things talked about were through a Q&A at the end. For example, somebody asked about Royal Caribbean since they too had a DreamWorks experience, and it was revealed that DreamWorks had Gaylord employees go to the experience on Royal Caribbean just to get some inspiration. The whole idea for the experience was actually thought up about four to five months before this meeting took place. But for those of you who are thinking Gaylord copied Royal Caribbean, then you're wrong, since people who worked with Royal Caribbean actually helped Gaylord with planning the DreamWorks experience. There's no rivalry between the two companies. They also mentioned that there would be more announcements made in July regarding the DreamWorks experience. So let's jump forward a bit to that month. So July rolls around and it's time for each Gaylord Hotel to hold a media event and get ready for Christmas to announce not only more info on the DreamWorks experience, but also the theme to their popular Christmas event, ICE. Now, it was announced back in April that ICE would also be themed after DreamWorks properties, but they didn't elaborate any further, until today. There were two different DreamWorks-themed ICE shows and would be spread out to each of the four Gaylord properties. Gaylord Opryland and Gaylord National would be receiving ICE based off the 2009 holiday special, Merry Madagascar, while Gaylord Palms and Gaylord Texan would be receiving ICE based off the 2007 holiday special, Shrek the Halls. They also announced more events and details on the DreamWorks experience, such as the inclusion of themed scavenger hunts, DreamWorks character wake-up calls, and getting the opportunity to make gingerbread houses with Gingy. Not only that, but they revealed when the DreamWorks experience would start, that being November 2011, and it would conclude in January 2012. But until then, the DreamWorks characters went into hiding. But they did help put the lights up on the trees, at least at Opryland. This is the best Christmas ever. Shrek, Poe, and my friend from Madagascar. It's the new Christmas Eve DreamWorks experience at Gaylord Hotels with all your favorite characters from DreamWorks Animation. Enjoy Shrek Feast. Yeah! Meet Puss in Boots at the DreamWorks 3D Theater. Two million pounds of carved ice. Whoa! Cool! It's spectacular! The holiday your family will never forget. To learn more, visit GaylordHotels.com. November finally rolls around and after a few small character sightings throughout the year, the DreamWorks characters officially came out of hibernation, just in time for the holidays. 
And what better event to kick off this experience than the annual resort Christmas lighting? You see, every November, all the Gaylord resorts have a big ceremony to kick off the holiday season, and that includes turning the Christmas tree and lights on. But that year, they had a few helpers. Three of the resorts had all the characters help light the tree, while Opryland just had the Madagascar characters help light the entire resort. And with that, we can officially begin talking about the DreamWorks experience and what it had to offer at all four properties. So I'm first going to start with Gaylord Opryland in Nashville, Tennessee, since it's the flagship hotel of the company. Now some of these DreamWorks activities span to all four resorts, but I'm just going to put them here for now. Fun fact, I actually visited Opryland when the DreamWorks experience first began, so I have a little bit more knowledge about its history at this hotel. So even before you get to experience the DreamWorks experience, at the front desk area there were a few murals featuring DreamWorks characters. Not sure if this was at any of the other resorts, but it was likely. Also, I don't think that these lasted outside 2011, because I, I visited later and uh, they weren't there anymore. So most of the DreamWorks experience was all located inside the Delta Atrium part of the resort. I'm guessing because either that was the most popular area, or it was the only available area to put all the activities in. Speaking of the activities, here's what they had to offer. First up, there's the character-themed breakfast Shrek Feast, where you can eat with Shrek and friends. They had a buffet that sold Shrek-themed foods, like Shrek-shaped waffles and a green chocolate fountain type thing. There was also a bunch of pictures of Shrek characters scattered throughout the dining area. But before you can enter, you have to take your ogre oath given by the town crier. That way you can become honorary ogres for the day, since Shrek gets a little nervous around humans. I will now read the ogre oath. Make sure you guys raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name without fear of dragons or pitchforks promise to enjoy all the ogre treats until my breath is stinky. Better out than in. So help me donkey. Alright. By the powers invested in me by the land of far, far away, I now pronounce you honorary ogres. Now go buy some Shrek and or donkey themed ears and you may enter the dining area. Oh, and make sure you get a family portrait. Then you get this cool little collectible. I still have mine and my family's portrait. Man, look at me. In all my young, nervous glory. If breakfast with characters isn't your thing, or it's later in the day when the breakfast area is closed, then you still have an opportunity to meet characters. Like I mentioned earlier, only three DreamWorks film series were included in the partnership. And so characters from those three films were meetable. The characters that you could meet at all four Gaylord hotels include... <gasps> Shrek. Fiona in her human form and ogre form, Puss in Boots, Gingy, Poe, Alex, Gloria, King Julian, Mort, and all four penguins, Skipper, Kowalski, Rico, and Private. All over the Delta Atrium, there were a few meet and greet spots for the characters. The Shrek characters met guests in front of Shrek's house that was appropriately under a bridge. I remember seeing Puss in Boots there when I visited. The Madagascar characters met in front of what I think is that little restaurant shelter thing that Marty built. I remember King Julian was out meeting guests there. And lastly, for Poe, he met guests in front of a few red Chinese buildings. However, it seems Poe didn't really come out that much, since I remember every time that me and my family walked past it, he was never out. But I do remember seeing him once, and my family made a joke saying that Jack Black was the one in the costume. Obviously, it wasn't true, but it was still funny. If you were staying at the resorts overnight, you could request a special wake-up call from a DreamWorks character. Unfortunately, these wake-up calls were never, as to my knowledge, archived, and are considered pieces of lost media. I also don't remember which characters could be requested, but I do remember us requesting Donkey. However, my sister picked up the phone before I could, and I never got to hear the message. If anybody has any information on these wake-up calls, 
Please let me know in the comments section. I really want to find these recordings. Another activity offered at all four resorts was the Puss in Boots Quest for the Magic Bean Scavenger Hunt. You see, the most recent DreamWorks film released at the time of this experience was Puss in Boots, so it only made sense to have promotions and activities based on that film. I'll talk more about Puss in Boots later, but in terms of the scavenger hunt, basically you would have to go through all the atriums at whatever Gaylord Hotel you were staying at, and find clues and items such as this Gingy, to figure out where the magic beans are hidden. And then answers would be filled out online for a chance to win the grand prize. Now what was the grand prize? Well, I don't know. Yeah, despite all four resorts doing this scavenger hunt and doing tons of research, I can't find out what the grand prize actually was. So once again, anybody watching this who has done the scavenger hunt or knows what the grand prize was, please comment down below, please and thank you. In terms of live entertainment, each resort had a normal holiday show. However, Opryland specifically had another live show, that being a DreamWorks show called the Holiday Shrektacular Show. Now, this show wasn't exclusive to Opryland as it was also performing at DreamWorld in Australia. But when it comes to the Gaylord Hotels, it was only ever found at Opryland and was located in the main indoor amphitheater and performed multiple times a day. And I bet you guys want me to go over what happens in the show. Well, that's not going to happen. Okay, fine. So it's basically a retelling of Shrek the Halls, but incorporates other DreamWorks characters in it. Shrek wants to know how to celebrate Christmas, so some human characters help him out. They sing about Christmas cookies with an appearance from Gingy. They talk about different Christmas music, and Poe shows up and performs Kung Fu Fighting. They talk about how to have a Christmas party with the penguins and invite kids from the audience to dance on the stage. And then Fiona shows up and tells Shrek that there's no right or wrong way to celebrate Christmas. I'm a Believer plays, Puss in Boots comes out of a present, and then all the characters come out for the finale. And that's the Holiday Shrektacular. Not a bad show, but it does have some flaws. But I guess I have to expect that since it's a low-budget show. If anyone's interested, I left a link to the full show in the description. Now we can move on to something a little bit more calming, but still full of Christmas spirit. So one of the best Christmas traditions lots of families do is build and decorate gingerbread houses. And at all four Gaylord Hotels, you could do exactly that. At Gingy's Gingerbread Decorating, this was pretty much just a place where you could decorate your own gingerbread houses. And at first it was located inside the resort, in Opryland's case inside the Ryman Exhibit Hall. I distinctly remember my family decorating a gingerbread house ornament and hug it on our Christmas tree for years. Although I don't think we still have it, sadly. The whole room was decorated to look like a gingerbread house with pictures of Shrek characters on the walls. There was also a large entrance area with a cutout of Gingy that you walk through and that takes you to a meet and greet area with Gingy himself. The area also sold Gingy-themed merchandise, including this Gingy hand puppet. And some of you may recognize this puppet, as I actually own one in my puppet collection. He was actually one of the first puppets I ever bought. And last, but certainly not least, we have the crown jewel of any Christmas-related event at any Gaylord Hotel. Ice. So like I said earlier in the last chapter, Opryland will be receiving ice based off Mary Madagascar. And that's exactly what happened. Now if you have never experienced ice at any Gaylord hotels, then you should because it's truly something special. Basically it's located inside the convention center part of the resort. And what you do is you go into a few rooms that have multiple ice sculptures based on some sort of Christmas story or special. Or in this case, Mary Madagascar. There's over 2 million pounds of ice that is hand-carved within the span of a month or two, as well as having giant ice slides that you can slide down. So for Mary Madagascar, they had different ice sculptures that tell the story of the special. There's also audio in each room that serves as dialogue for the characters. At the end of every experience, there's a room full of ice sculptures depicting the classic nativity scene that leads into the main gift shop area of the convention center. And for Mary Madagascar, there was a meet-and-greet spot for the penguins. 
So this concludes what Gaylord Opryland had to offer in terms of the DreamWorks experience in 2011. I will now talk about the other three resorts. I will now go on to Gaylord Palms, located in Kissimmee, Florida. So for starters, they had the same activities that were at all the other resorts, like Shrek Feast and the gingerbread decorating. But there were three notable experiences to go over, all taking place inside their convention center. The first being their ice theme, which was, as stated before, Shrek the Halls, complete with many Shrek-themed ice sculptures, ice slides, and even a giant dragon that was over one of the entrances. Although I'm not sure which one I like better, Shrek the Halls or Merry Madagascar. Another experience offered here involved Puss in Boots. And that was a complete freaking movie theater. Yeah, so since Puss in Boots was just released in theaters at the time, they decided to have a temporary theater set up so people staying at the hotel could go see the movie. It was all set up like a Hollywood premiere with walls of camera flashes, and even Puss himself was out there taking pictures, and had multiple meet and greet areas themed after the movie. This won't be the last time we talk about Puss in Boots, but for now let's move on to the last experiences offered at Gaylord Palms. The last experience offered was a standard Gaylord holiday tradition. So you know about ice, but do you know about snow? Yeah, so just like ice, snow was where you could literally play and go sledding in real snow. About 130 tons of it. And for this year, 2011, the snow area was themed after Kung Fu Panda, and dubbed Kung Fu Panda Awesome Snow. Finally, Poe gets something more than just a meet and greet spot. The area didn't change too much, they just added Chinese themed decor and a statue of Poe. Okay, and that's all for Gaylord Palms, now we'll move on to the last two resorts. Last but not least, I will quickly talk about Gaylord National in Washington DC and Gaylord Texan in Grapevine, Texas. I'm grouping these two together since there's not much to talk about. Starting with Gaylord National, they pretty much had the same experience as Opryland had, such as Ice themed to Merry Madagascar. However, they did not have the holiday spectacular stage show. But they did have a DreamWorks show in front of their Christmas tree with some cool water effects. Finally, Gaylord Texan, which had the same experiences as Gaylord Palms, like Ice themed to Shrek the Halls, the Kung Fu Panda Snow, and the Puss in Boots movie theater. Speaking of Puss in Boots, something noteworthy to mention is that there was a special VIP premiere for the Puss in Boots movie held at Gaylord Texan, with the stars from the film in attendance. Sadly, they would not do this again with any of the other DreamWorks movies to premiere after Puss in Boots. When January 2012 came around, all the resorts began taking down the Christmas-related experiences and decorations, but the DreamWorks experience was far from over, as we still have a few more years left. Though I will warn you, it's going to get a little repetitive from here on out. This Christmas is even greener, as Gaylord Opryland Resort brings the popular DreamWorks animation holiday tale, Shrek the Halls, to you in ice. Carved from 2 million pounds of ice, these larger-than-life sculptures in giant ice slides feature scenes and characters from the animated TV special, including Shrek, Fiona, Donkey, and all their fun friends. Ice, presented by Coca-Cola and sponsored by Delta Dental and Nova Copy, is part of Gaylord Opryland's A Country Christmas. Visit Christmas at GaylordOpryland.com. After Christmas, the Gaylord Hotels really didn't do much with the DreamWorks experience. They really only did a few little events like dance parties, pajama parties, and meet and greets. It wasn't until the summer of 2012 when things started to get back up and going, as all the resorts began doing a summer fun experience. However, nothing really new was added to the already existing experiences, at least for the most part, but there were a few activities offered, at least at Gaylord Opryland. The first one I will talk about is the Kung Fu Panda Academy of Awesomeness. Yep, Poe's getting some more representation. Now this experience didn't actually teach you Kung Fu, 
even though that would be awesome. But it was more of just an activity to get kids moving. They would learn how to talk in kung fu language, like how to say hello and goodbye, as well as different kung fu poses. There were also a few little games that you probably played in PE class. Kids even got to hang out with Poe himself and practice kung fu moves. Again, this was a smaller activity, but still fun for kids. There were also a few larger experiences offered, such as a small parade with several of the characters, as well as a Madagascar-themed cookout called the Crackalack and Cookin'. I'm pretty sure this was a character diner, too. Speaking of characters, something big happened in the summer. This was only ever at Gaylord Texan. They added a new DreamWorks film series to the DreamWorks experience. To go along with Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and Madagascar, we now have... How to Train Your Dragon. However, despite being able to make things based off this awesome film series, they really only did another training type interactive show, similar to the Kung Fu Panda one at Opryland. But this show did introduce two new characters that soon after became meetable, that being Hiccup and Astrid, some of the only face characters throughout the experience's history. But despite all this, it wasn't the biggest thing to come out of this year. The biggest thing to take place that year was, of course, ICE 2012. And just like last year, they did not disappoint. So for ICE 2012, they really just switched the two ICE themes from the last year and put them in different resorts. So Gaylord Opryland and Gaylord National would be receiving Shrek the Halls ICE, while Gaylord Palms and Gaylord Texan would receive Merry Madagascar ICE. Speaking of Gaylord Palms, they had something interesting at their Merry Madagascar Ice announcement. None other than Vanilla Ice himself showed up and performed his iconic song, Ice Ice Baby. I'm not kidding, they actually did this. Opryland didn't do anything as crazy as Palms did, but they still had the Shrek characters come out on stage in their Christmas outfits, and Gingy helped out with putting the lights on the trees. Speaking of Gingy, they also announced that Gingy's gingerbread decorating would no longer be inside the hotel, but rather in the convention center where ice was held. Along with everything else returning, Opryland received the Kung Fu Panda Snow Experience, also held in the convention center. The Holiday Shrektacular stage show also returned to the amphitheater, and Shrek and his pals officially kicked off the holiday season once again, by lighting the Christmas trees. Along with all these returning favorites, the Gaylord Resorts decided to create a new scavenger hunt to go along with the Puss in Boots one. But this time it was themed after the recently released DreamWorks film, Rise of the Guardians. Remember that film? The one with Jack Frost and a bunch of people think he's hot, but really he's cold? Yeah, that film. I couldn't find much information on this scavenger hunt. I only remember hearing about it in an article, but I'm assuming it had something to do with the film. Although it's been a while since I've seen the film, so I couldn't actually tell you what that was. Although this was one of the few times that DreamWorks actually had something based on a recently released film at the DreamWorks experience. And that's pretty much it. History repeats itself once again, and the DreamWorks experience once again became seasonal. Meaning we would now have to move on to 2013. really didn't bring anything different to the DreamWorks experience, although you could definitely see that the partnership was close to ending. A lot of the activities summer and Christmas related didn't return this year, including the Shrektacular show, and some smaller experiences, but most of the larger experiences returned. Meet and greets continued all throughout the year, and once again Gaylord Texan decided to roll out more How to Train Your Dragon material, in the form of a new meetable character, Toothless. 
Now, Toothless was actually introduced in 2012, but it really began to be used in 2013. I know I haven't really mentioned the costumes individually in this video, but I'll make an exception for Toothless here. Mostly because it appears the performer was positioned to walk on all fours, which sounds kind of uncomfortable. But I should mention that Toothless wasn't the only dragon to appear at Gaylord Texan. So in 2012, DreamWorks partnered with the company who created the Walking with Dinosaurs Arena show to create a How to Train Your Dragon live arena show. It first started performing in Australia before starting its United States tour in 2013. And to promote the show, a few actors would visit places in the same city they were performing in just to promote the show and encourage people to come. One of the places that the performers went to was the Gaylord Texan Hotel. So for a full day, the cast hung out at the hotel interacting with guests. But they also had another character with them, the Baby Dragon. Just like how Walking with Dinosaurs had a Baby T-Rex, How to Train Your Dragon Live Spectacular had a Baby Dragon, both of which were controlled the same way and both had visible human legs underneath. A little while after the Dragon's cast appeared at Gaylord Texan, the 2013 ice theme was announced, and it was an interesting but understandable theme. So before that, both Shrek the Halls and Merry Madagascar ice themes were discarded and never to be seen again at any of the resorts. Therefore, a new theme would take their place at all four resorts. So what was the theme for the 2013 ice? Well, it was none other than the 1969 Rankin-Bass Christmas special, Frosty the Snowman. Now you're probably wondering, what does Frosty have to do with DreamWorks? Well, if you didn't know, DreamWorks actually owns the rights to this Frosty special. You see, Rangan Bass and all of its films were acquired by the company called Classic Media, and in 2012, Classic Media was sold to DreamWorks and rebranded as DreamWorks Classics. So that's how and why DreamWorks is able to have Frosty the Snowman in the DreamWorks experience. Also, since they bought Classic Media, they now own other beloved characters and series like Rocky and Bullwinkle, Underdog, and even VeggieTales. Going back to Frosty, this ice experience, like I said earlier, was brought to all four resorts in each convention center, along with Genji's decorating space. And guys, I'm going to be honest with you, the Frosty the Snowman ice experience is probably the best ice that ever came out of the DreamWorks experience. As cool as Shrek and Madagascar were, they looked a little off-model when it came to the colors and shapes of the characters. I know it's all hand-carved, but still. While with Frosty it looked a lot better since everything was made with simple shapes and designs, and the colors were a lot more accurate. History once again repeats itself as we move on to the last year for the DreamWorks experience, and I'm not excited to talk about this. Experience a country Christmas November 14th through January 3rd with Ice featuring Twas the Night Before Christmas. Favorite scenes come to life in more than 2 million pounds of hand-carved ice sculptures and slides depicting the classic holiday poem. Enjoy a new bonus area, the Frostbite Factory, and watch artisans from Harbin, China carve amazing ice sculptures before your eyes. Your awe-inspiring experience concludes with the wonder of the nativity in ice. For tickets and packages, visit Christmas at GaylordOpryland.com. Twenty fourteen was probably the worst year for the DreamWorks experience, which is sad since it was the last year. I also visited Opryland in two thousand fourteen, and I can confirm that compared to two thousand eleven, this year was very lacking in terms of the DreamWorks related things. Really, the only things that were offered were the gingerbread decorating, meet and greets, and Shrek Feast, which was only offered on select days. The only characters I remember seeing were Shrek in his Santa suit. Alex the Lion, and Gingy. There were also no DreamWorks logos anywhere, not even in the DreamWorks themed areas. If anything, there were more logos advertising LSU since they were in Tennessee at the time for some sort of football event. The only good thing to come out of the 2014 DreamWorks experience was the ice theme for that year. And even then, that has some problems. 
You see, instead of having a DreamWorks-themed ice or a Rankin-Bass special, they decided that for all four resorts, the theme for ice would be the classic story, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Here's some pictures my mom took. And while it was certainly beautiful and colorful, there's just something odd that the ice theme wasn't DreamWorks related, despite the DreamWorks experience still going on. Also, when I visited, I remember that they were still carving the ice, and so throughout the whole walkthrough, you just heard this chainsaw noise, and it really took away from the experience. So now we enter January 2015, the end of both the Christmas season and the DreamWorks experience. And did the Gaylord Hotels do something special to send off the DreamWorks characters and activities? Nope. It was gone pretty much overnight, and Gaylord quickly became DreamWorks-less. And that brings us to today. As of 2021, all the Gaylord resorts are still alive and well and continuing expanding their resorts to other states. They still, of course, do Christmas activities, but they're now themed to more classic Christmas movies and specials, like Charlie Brown, The Grinch, and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Hey, that's kind of DreamWorks. But now you're probably wondering if the DreamWorks experience could come back to the Gaylord Hotels. Personally, I don't think so. Mostly because the DreamWorks today is not the same as DreamWorks back then. They've gotten a lot stricter with licensing their characters out to different companies, especially now that they're owned by Comcast and Universal. So the only place you can find DreamWorks characters at are Universal Parks and a few other miscellaneous parks. And I doubt they would ever come back to Gaylord Hotels. Although they do have this cool water park at American Dream Mall. In lands far, far away, something is stirring. Invitations have been delivered. Plans are being made. And the excitement is building. Shrek, Poe, Alex, and all their friends are taking a vacation and bringing your vacation to life. And there you have it. The history of the DreamWorks experience at Gaylord Hotels. I hope everybody watching this had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and got everything you wanted, because I certainly did. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next year for the history of Season 2. Bye bye Madagascar! With a special Christmas ditty, I wrote it myself. You better watch out, better not cry, better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to Madagascar. There he is, shake it, Batman. He's making a list and checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to Madagascar. Yes, he's coming, y'all. Get ready. He sees when you are sleeping. It's a little creepy. He knows when you're awake. He's in your room. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be bad, for goodness sake. Coconut bad, bad. You better watch out. Better not cry. Better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to Madagascar. Oh, Santa time! Here he is, here he is, here he is. Go Santa, go Santa, go Santa, go Santa. Toys, 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 toys. Wood plays, wood dust, wood games, wood balls, wood trays, wood bats, wood cranes, wood hats. What? What? That everything's made out of wood. What are you saying to me? Santa Claus is coming to Madagascar. Yes, yes. It's the holidays, y'all. Let's get some elves up in here, yes! Where are the flying reindeer? Go Dasher, go Dancer, go Prancer, go Vixen, go Comet, go Cupid, go Donna, go Blitzen! Yes! What's this dancer just invented? It 
it would blow your eyes out of the back of your mind. Shake it, shake it, shake it like a snow globe. Shake it, shake it, shake it like a snow globe. Cold in the globe, cold in the globe. Cold in the globe, cold in the globe. Hey, hey, Original hey, 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 hey. Peace out. <laughs>